Welcome to the Dave Palma Show, the podcast that revives, restores, and awakens your innermost capabilities. You have the training and the talent to succeed, but do you have the guts to fail? I love what I do. When you love what you do, you want to be the best at it. Today is about the power of you. You will change the world. Find your path to success through the journey of those who have succeeded. And now, your host, Dave Palma. Hi, welcome, welcome back to the Dave Palmer Show. And in this episode is an Amazon best-selling author and also a publisher and a writing coach based in Roll Tide Country, Alabama. La Monique Mack, welcome to the Dave Palmer Show. Thank you, Dave. Thank you for having me. Oh, such a such a, um, a pleasure having you here. Such a pleasure. And um, yeah, it's always good to have authors. I have a, probably of recent times, I've had many authors now, probably 50-50 actually. Um, but you're also a publisher as well. And we're going to come to that uh, later because yeah. obviously you have a story to tell about yourself and how you became an uh, initial author uh, and you had a, a first book written. So, so tell us your story and, and how you wrote that first book. I mean, okay. what was your story about your humble beginnings? Yeah, well, let me tell you, it did. I'm, I know we're going to dive deeper into the fact that I'm a publisher later, but yeah. the way I began writing my book started with me publishing others. And let me tell you how that started. My first book actually was a Christian how to book. Right. And when I turned like 40, I kind of went through and wrote how it was called. Uh, well, we won't even talk about the title of that book. But anyway, <laughs> it was basically, I'm 40 now, and these are all the life lessons, the seven major life lessons from the Bible that taught me how to live. You know, and I, and I wrote a couple of other short stories that were like that. And because I had published books, other Christian or ministers were coming to me and saying, hey, well, will you help me publish my memoir? And I would be developing their stories. And then after doing so many of their stories, I got kind of inspired myself. Like, I don't have to just write how-to books. I could write, like, novels because I, hey, after reading their overcoming stories, I'm thinking, I've got a story to tell, you know? And so it was deep within me, and I didn't realize how much I had held on to. And it, so the story, I had this title in my mind, Poor Little Mixed Girl. And yeah. at first I was going to make it one book. And then I realized I've got so much to say. This needs to be a series. And I, I grew up mixed in America back in the eighties. Well, I was born in the seventies, but you know, I majorly was growing up, you know, through the adolescent years and that um, in the eighties, which was a different time in America than it is now. Now I know a lot of people say we haven't progressed, but I, I believe that we have progressed most definitely <laughs> from yeah, yeah. when I grew up. Cause I grew up at a time, my, um, first of all, my real, my biological mother was white and my yeah. father was black and my biological mother brought me to a babysitter to watch me while she went to college. And she was only 19 and she was in a domestic relationship with my father and so eventually she tried to leave him. And I'm from Michigan, originally a small city in Michigan. And so she yeah. told my adopted, I mean, she told my uh, babysitter, can you watch my daughter while I uh, go to Detroit to establish myself? And she went to Detroit and she never came back. Right. So, so I was left with the babysitter like a year passed and I was... I had been with the babysitter since I was two weeks old, really. So she became mom to me. The babysitter now became mom. Yeah. And she adopted me. Um, and a lot of people in the family, and she was black. The woman who adopted me was black. And a lot of people in the family were not so happy that I was adopted. And I had a lot of um, hearing every day, you know, you're trash and this is where you came from. My biological mother ended up when she went to Detroit, she was kind of a person who had mental health issues. So she was vulnerable and a pimp picked her up and, and turned her, what they say, quote unquote, turned her out, turned her into a prostitute. Mm -hmm. And so when she was, so I knew who my dad was because that, that happened after I was born. But when she mm -hmm. came back to um, my small city, to, uh, the city of Saginaw, um, in Michigan, trying to reclaim me. I was already adopted. And so people kind of knew the lifestyle that she had now. And she she tried to kind of like do that for money um, while she was there. And so then people began to make fun of me. You're the daughter of a whore. 
And I heard that actually inside my household. And I talk about that in the book. I heard that inside inside my household continuously. You're nothing. You're the daughter of a whore. Um, on top of that, I later learned that I had been born with cocaine in my system. That when my mother was nine mm-hmm. months pregnant, mm-hmm. she overdosed on cocaine. They documented it. And so my adopted mother had all these um papers on me like that she had gotten, you know, from social services. So I read through the papers and I saw, you know, that I was, uh, had been born addicted to drugs. And so all growing up, I was always like ADHD. I would just like miss can't get it right, you know, in school. And I had all these, and, and, and in the black community, there was no such thing as ADHD. I mean, there was, but it was not acknowledged. Yeah. And so, you know, there was, it was just, she's bad. You know, she's bad. And so I was always like, my future was always foretold to be bad. There's nothing could be good come of me good because of where I came from. And so I wrote this story to show the pain that I was going through because there could be other foster kids. There could be other parents who aren't realizing what they're speaking over their children. And, and especially for the child that's going through that to realize you don't have to be what they said you would be. And I am an excellent example of you don't have to be what they called you or what they said you would be. You can be an overcomer. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, so this happened in your early time in your life, and and, and so so where where was your journey going, and how did you manage to turn all this around to to be something? Well, I'm gonna tell you. For me, the the turnaround happened, um, which I haven't written book for. So book one, two, and three, you kind of see La Monica gradually. Um, then by book two, you see her paying the consequences of her decision. Yeah. Is it the same name? The book's the same name, yeah. Well, no, it, it, book, book two is called, um, I'm sorry, this book one is Poor Little Mixed Girl. They're all under the series, the Mixed Girl series. Oh, okay, yeah. And book so that's two, the franchise, if you like. That's the franchise, yeah. Book one yeah, is yeah. Poor Little Mixed Girl. And book two, I'm sorry, I'm, I don't know how the name is escaping me from book two. I probably <laughs> refer to it as book two. All right. Um, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, we, Mixed so, Out. I'm sorry. Book two is called Mixed Out. All right. Okay. And book so three tell us is... about that. You're okay. gone. Number okay. three. You would because they're both moving into different phases of your life. Phase one, two, and three. I guess those yeah. books, aren't mm-hmm. they? Yeah. yeah. So let's let's talk about phase two now. So in phase two, book two, which is called Mixed Out. Yeah. <laughs> I now remember the name of my own book. <laughs> Series two, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, she. She basically wants to escape all of this emotional abuse that she's getting and some physical abuse that she's getting in book one. And she turns into a teenager. And so she escapes it with what she thinks is love. And even though things were harsh and what I call mama's house Mm. with that's my, you know, adopted mother, mama, one of the best for the character's name is La Monica. Cause I turned my name into a character instead of La Monique, her name's La Monica, but Mama wanted the best for her, but she was kind of harsh at the way she went about it. And so La Monica wants to get free and she listens to a thug in the community. And the thug has his own plans for her, which are not for the best, but she is, she doesn't know any better. She's just trying to get away. So you see me leave my mother's home, my mother's values, because she still had good values, like work hard, you know, work for the things you get in life, things like that. And I run off with this thug who he has no good values. You know, he's, he steals, he uh, manipulates, scams. And so I go run off with this thug. And then you see, you start to see the consequences that a young girl pays for not listening to her parents and running off, you know, with a thug. And so that's what we see going on in book two. And then we see La Monica um, enter into uh, computer school. Sometimes you know, we see her begin to get educated. And by book three, she's, that's called snakes in the mix. By book three, she's, she's moving, you know, even more forward with education. And so by book four, which book four doesn't come out until this year, until 2022, oh, okay. probably in the fall. All right. Well, we'll have to talk three. again on, before that one comes out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Floor, sure. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, well, we talk a little bit about it now what's to expect from it, but uh, let's let's move on to from book two to three then. 
Yeah, well, that that's pretty much it. But in book, because I don't want to give too much away. But in book three, no, no, of course not. Book three, she's really she's really coming into an adult now, and mm-hmm. she's really waking up to what she needs to do to be independent. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's overcoming really by educating herself at that point. But by book four, she's yeah. going to totally, um, you know, overcome. And it really is a, a religious experience that okay. th- that really helps her to overcome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that, that's just going to tease the, the audience enough so they can either pick up the book later this year or, and, and hopefully uh, speak to you again on the, on the yeah, show. Um, I'd love to come back if you'll have Yeah, me. definitely. Yeah. I mean, obviously you, you give me a shout when it's nearly ready for launch and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. So, um, yeah. Okay. So you've got these four books out, um, but they were pr- um, pr- published after you became a publisher. That's quite interesting really, I suppose. Yeah. Um, because a lot of publishers don't really do that. They're either publishers and they're not publishing a book or they've published and got into publishing books and then they've, uh, sorry, they've written their own books and then they got into books so much that they became a publisher, you know? Yeah. So, um, so that, that's quite interesting. What actually got you into becoming a publisher? I always wanted to write books and publish. Well, I always wanted to write books from the time I was a child. Um, I had no way of doing it. I know you asked me publisher, <laughs> I I tend to think draw things out, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. My original my original goal was always to write books from the time I was a child. But when I became an adult, you know, I got married, had children, yeah. and we didn't have KDP back in those days. See, I'm in my 40s, yeah, so yeah. back in those days, we didn't have like print on demand. And if you did want to self publish, you were going to have to pay upwards of thousands of dollars and pre buy yeah. those books, and it just was not possible for me and um i always was like had you know so much issue with rejection because of how i grew up that there was no way i was going to submit to traditional publishing and i knew it would take lots of rejection before i heard a yes and i i couldn't take it so um once anyway so i had that in the back of my heart and i ended up going to college for marketing and business and and that 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 dream of writing and publishing, then publishing came in. Cause like the business aspect of what writing came, came into view. And I was like, I really want to publish other people's books. Yeah. And so when, when, um, when I got done with marketing classes, cause I, I only did like an associate level, but when I got done with marketing classes, some ministers approached me who had written their own books, but they had no idea how to market them. They didn't build any marketing into it when they were writing it. And then once they did the hard part of writing their books, they had no idea where to go from there. Well, I had learned all these marketing things in college. And so I began to build their websites, do their social media, their graphics. And so that's how I got into marketing. And it was always niched and tailored to writers. And I still had that from business school. I still had that dream of being a publisher in me. And after I published my first book, um, I just started talking about it and it just... It was just like um, meant to be for me when I started like, you know, on social media, how you talk about your first book and instead of really as much questions about my book, people were saying, well, can you help me publish my book though? (laughs) (laughs) That was like the response I was getting from people. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, well, here's your time, Lamonique. Nothing's holding you back now, you you know? Yeah. And so I had my first client in 2019 and we published her book by Stavetta Temple. She's a minister, um, A Broken Heart Made Whole. And it's about a young girl growing up in Detroit, also adversity, growing up, um, being raped and overcoming all sorts of uh, adversity. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. So that, that really, that does happen. Uh, you know, the, the kind of social media can shape you and it's quite a good marketing tool sometimes where you get feedback and, and yeah. stuff like that. And you kind of like find your calling that way, I suppose. But, um, so, so basically how did, how did it sort of grow from there? From there, it was really word of mouth. It really yeah. was word of mouth. And I, uh, Stavetta, her book did phenomenal. Like, yeah. yeah. It did phenomenal. I would go with her to help her with her book signings. Yeah. Um, she, she was she was like an active person. The book clubs picked it up. They picked it up on some um, cruise, and it was being sold in the South because she lives here in the South, but she's originally 
from Detroit. So it was selling all over. So next thing she's referring me to her friends in Detroit, then friends of friends. And it was really word of mouth. And, um, and I really only take clients that align with me. You know, I don't really yeah, yeah. hardcore actively seek um, clients because they need to align with my values. And I, I do overcoming stories generally or how to help someone. Like, for instance, there is a young lady here whose book I did um, about starting a fashion boutique. Yeah. But, but, you know, it's still she has a Christian value foundation, but it's about building a fashion boutique. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's quite. quite uh, and my company's quite, name is Southern Women Publishing. That's the actual publishing company name. Yeah. And I. Uh, you go. Oh, oh, okay. Well, and I wanted to say another another part of my brand is I cater to the women in the South who have more of a Southern flair. Because even though I grew up in the North, I know you're in the UK, but here mm -hmm. in the US, we kind of have like this culture. We've got the Northern culture and we've got the Southern yeah, yeah. culture. And it's a little bit different. All right, yeah. And a lot of- um, oh, I I'm suppose sorry. there's a kind of Northwest in, in the UK. Y'all uh, have that? England. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but it's more of a kind of teasing thing. It's not, It's a, maybe the accent just separates you. There's no, you know, the culture's probably not that much difference. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, but does it, yeah, but for you, it's a difference in culture as well. Yeah, well, like most of the, um, especially in the time that I grew up when I was, you know, what I wrote about the Mixed Girl series and Poor Little Mixed Girl, growing up in that time period, uh, most of the black, the black Americans were are originally or have roots from the South. Yeah. And so they kind of um, have like a Southern flair in the way they speak and, you know, some of their cultural values. And so I grew up, even though I grew up in the North, I grew up with a lot of Southern cultural values. So once I moved to the South, I'm in Alabama where my husband is from. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to help a lot of the ladies who may get turned down by other people because their conversation style is not what is um, quote unquote appropriate English. Yeah. But they have books that are written that the culture would understand. You know what I mean? Yeah. The dialect. Right. Okay. Um, so culture and dialects. So, I mean, the dialect meaning the ways people speak or, or the culture as in, you know, how people sort of do things around them and things like kind that. Kind of a little bit of both. Um, heavy on the dialect. Yeah. Whereas someone would be like, oh, this is improper grammar. People who want to read those style of books either want to know the style of books that I publish and also write, people either want to know a little bit about a different culture yeah. or they already are in that culture and they understand that dialect. You know, sometimes some people may call it hood speech, you know, oh, okay. term bitty <laughs> modern, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, the either, South, the South. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean we yeah, it's quite well known about the South and, and, and yeah. So okay, all right. Well um let's let's move on to, to stuff you're doing at the moment. What's going for you at the moment? Well, at the moment I am publishing a marketing why well, I'm sorry, I have a marketing course out on Teachable and yeah. it's helping people because a lot of times people publish a book and they don't have a marketing plan out there. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, my, my whole tagline is book, book marketing should no longer remain a mystery. And I'm going to help you with that with free and low cost ways of marketing yeah. your book, how to get reviews, um, you know, how to get um, your book placed in more categories on Amazon. I myself in my book series have been an Amazon bestseller in yeah. African American fiction. And so I want to help others and I want to help as many people as I can. And I feel the best way to do that, I can't always do it one-on-one -on -one like I do with my clients. So the best way to do that is with a course. And if you want to get some free information, um, you can go to bit.ly forward slash golden roadmap. And that's going to give you a golden book marketing roadmap for free. And I'm laying out a lot right there from for free. Yeah. And that'll give you an idea if you're interested in the class or if you feel you can just take that information and go with go with it from for now. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Well, I'm sure the, the, the listeners, anyone listening to this will, will appreciate that. Um, so let, let's move on with obviously what was going on with your fourth book. Are you actually working in it right now? I mean, what are, we, what are we going to expect before it comes out? Well, um, you're predicting obviously October this year. 
Well, I, um, another thing, I don't know, I did mention to you about the ADHD. So that didn't just go away yeah. <laughs> when I became an adult. And yeah. so I, I get really excited about a lot of things and I, I have to be careful at how I manage all those things. And so right, yeah. um, I'm managing when I produce my book. It'll probably come out in the fall and I'll be working on it this summer. Because right now I have two clients' books that I'm working on. And when I when I publish people's books, I give them a full experience. Like I some people, depending on their level of writing, we have to might have to do a lot of developmental editing, meaning we need to develop the book first. We need, yeah. you know, so um I have one client where we're developing her book for uh, May. And then I have another minister who I'm uh, editing and then going to publish her book soon. So I really have to focus on my clients right now. But this summer, I will be focusing on book four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, we'll keep an ear out for that. And uh, yeah, it's just a quite um, <laughs> intriguing uh, um you know, to, to hear about your story. I, I wasn't sure, obviously at the beginning we had a chat before, you know, yeah. and, uh, yeah, glad to hear it really. And, um, yeah, I didn't even realize you wrote, well now four books also almost coming out. So that's a really good accomplishment as well as being a publisher. So, um, uh, really, really great pleasure having you on the show today, Lemonique. Um, is there anything, uh, you know, inspirational you could say out there for our guests? Um, because obviously this is a sh more of an inspirational show, you know. So. Yeah. Um, well, I just want you to know that you don't have to be what they called you. Um, you are an overcomer. And to remember to speak, speak that. And I believe that we overcome with a relationship with Jesus. And if you're interested in that, you can always ask me about it. You can visit my yeah. website at w, my author website yeah. is www.authorlamoniquemack.com. You can go to the contact page and we can talk about that. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Well, um, we'll, we'll leave it there. And uh, Lamonique, great pleasure having a show. Thanks a lot for coming to talk to my audience today. Thank you so much for having me, Dave. That's all for this episode. Thanks for listening. And remember, if you want to support what we do, then share, subscribe, and leave a review over on Apple Podcasts. Or head over to my website, davepalmer.com, and click on Rate Show. Well, that's all for now, but I'll see you in the next episode of The Dave Palmer Show. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.